this guy works. So this is a FLIR thermal imaging camera. This is used by mechanics and firemen. Um, and you can see me in there. I'm orange, red, and yellow. So that means I'm the warmest thing in here. Oh, we got mostly ladies. Sorry, Jerry. That means I'm the hottest thing in the video, ladies. So, so with that said, everything around me should be somewhat blue or black, right? We're looking for those blue or black spots to move on their own. We want to try to keep somebody's skin temperature in here because we want that high variance. Our skin temperature is going to be the warmest thing out here. Should not be over 99 degrees, by the way. I'm just going to point that out. Um, but with that said, it's going to give us the cold spot. It's going to move around at the coldest spot in the camera at that given time. It's going to be a blue dot. So when you get your video back tomorrow, because yes, you will get this full video back tomorrow. The software for this thing is horrible. We will start and stop this thing periodically throughout the night. I do have it recording now just so you guys can have that full demonstration at the beginning. So with that said, Amanda, just because I remembered your name first, I didn't want to forget it. You're going to be my camera person all night long. You're going to oh, hold I got it. You. You're going to hold it horizontal just like that. Your camera's on the left-hand side where you're... My blocking eyes. Oh, nope, yeah, other there hand. You there you go. So the orange square that's on your screen means that it's already recording. At times I'm going to say, Amanda, stop your video because we're going to kind of savor it and I'm going to splice it all together for you guys in order for tomorrow morning. Fair enough? Do Perfect. I just press yeah. the stop button to yep. stop it? Okay. And kind of give your hand a break. Pay no attention to the timer. Perfect. Okay. That's a cool little device. I want one of those. Yeah. Phenomenal. I love that guy. So when I'm doing my own investigations, that guy is usually in a cargo pocket with just a little camera sticking out. So that way... Oh, it shows the temperature. Nobody knows what I'm doing. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I can walk yeah. around anywhere. <laughs> so let's go through spirit boxes. We're going to use several different types tonight. So spirit boxes are on your TV shows and your YouTube videos. It's basically white noise through radio stations. It's going to flip through all of the radio stations at a very quick rate. Mine are slowed down. The ones on television, it's a rarity to find an actual disembodied voice, meaning something that is coming from the other side, using the white noise to portray a message to us. Mine are slowed down because I want the radio DJs and commercials and song lyrics to give us those messages. In the event we can hear something out of this device, it's a 50-50 shot that we can make out. I can tie it to the location, a person in history I'm talking about, or even something with one of us. It happens all the time. However, keep it, this guy records the entire session, even on mute, even without any background noise. So. This is a very simple device to use. However, it is the hardest job out here. So, Pat, you have one button to worry about. You're going to control the volume. Okay. So, when I'm talking to the whole group, you're going to turn the wheel so it's all the way down. It's recording at a nice, even level, even when it's on mute, folks. So, when you guys get this recording back, you're going to hear everything at a nice, even volume. I will give you 15 to 20 markers of things that I caught when I review it. Keep in mind, guys, you're going to record probably a good six hours worth of data. I'm not going to go through it all. That's what y'all paid me for. Okay, so I'm going to go through that for probably 15 to 20 minutes and spot check it, and I'm going to give you those 15 to 20 different markers. Even if it's not relevant, it's going to help train your ear to listen for certain things. I am looking for specific details, not yes or no questions. We'll kind of go through that more as we hit our first stop. Tracy. Only because Jerry and I were talking about this on his podcast your podcast <laughs> about the different types of apps so I actually wanted to show you guys one of the ones that I love to use um, this one is going to give us this is another spirit box it's going to give us a word from time to time in the center of the screen just kind of like an ovulus and then it's going to save all those words to a list with timestamps the cool thing about this is it has timestamps which means I can check the audio videos or whatever else I need to do based on the timestamps this last tour I had had 85 terms I'm going to clear them out we're all adults here. 80% of what comes up on this list is BS. It doesn't mean anything. This is meant to be a game and a hoax. The other 5 to 20%, I will tell you why it was relevant to our location or something going on with one of us, and the backlink to verify where I got my information from. Is that fair to everybody? Mm -hmm. That one goes to you. At times, I'll ask you, Tracy, where are we at with the list? There's a little white ribbon next to the word ribbon right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you tap that, it'll bring up the whole list. You can scroll through it. I'll say, give me the last four or five terms. Let me see what's going on. Okay. Um, and then you just circle back at the top right. Alright. Next. One more spirit box. Alright. This is a standard spirit box. This is an SP7. So the only difference on this one versus the one that Pat has is it doesn't record. Oh, okay. So the two of you, the reason why I'm giving this one to you guys is because hers records audio. So in the event you guys are working together, 
we can catch it at the same time. Perfect. I normally give this to two people so that way they can verify what they actually heard. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so you also have one button to worry about. It's on the side of the ball speaker. So if this is face up, you're gonna hold the ball speaker, the little button up to get volume. You're gonna hold it there and give it a minute oh, to give you some volume. Yep. Okay. So figure out how to work it and front, like get the volume down. All right, let's see this. Okay. Yes. You're my multitasker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need some type of EMF device, electromagnetic field, in order to be able to determine if something is actually happening. So this is called a millimeter. Actually, it does three different functions. Your big numbers are EMF, electromagnetic field. If it goes above 2.5, I want to take a look at it and try to debunk if it's coming from a building, a parking meter, so forth and so on. So again, if it goes above 2.5, in the event, Amanda finds something on her camera, we can find out what's going on with that cold spot with the temperature that's the bottom of her. Okay. So it's going to measure through an ambient probe right here. The last thing that it has is a millimeter. So the millimeter, if anything gets close to the antenna, I'll give it a second to reset because we are standing pretty close to some wiring. If something gets close to it, it will go off. The closer it gets, obviously the higher pitch it's going to go. I'll show you more about that at our first location. Just for now, leave this little flap open for me so I can show you a little bit more. Okay. Focus on the numbers on the screen. All right, that's it. Let's go. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. Oh, no, you're going to be working. So you're getting the brand new device. Where's your thermal camera? Oh, we have the thermal over oh, here. This is a full spectrum. Full spectrum. Oh, oh so cool. So, quick demo on this guy. Notice you all cannot see me in that photo, or in the, the screen there. Mm -hmm. It should be pretty dark. Let's turn on some lights. Ooh, ooh. So we are working with long range, Jerry, short range. So in the event you're with a group of people, you turn off the short range with the little red button. Um, we're only gonna be recording in two spots, just because it kills the battery on this and the files are giant. So again, we only have about, I think it's like 47 minutes on here. Um, so I'll kind of give you the cue, but we'll show you more a little bit about that at the first stop. Oh, it's, it's pretty sturdy. Yeah, you can one-hand it if you need to. Okay. All right, so recap on what you guys, as far as your data, you're going to be getting back. So obviously a spirit box audio with a couple of markers. This audio here, full thermal imaging video, probably about 30 to 40 minutes of full spectrum video. Um, the full word list and any notes that I take from the two devices that are not recording. So you guys will see me taking notes just like a little scientist because that's what I am. <laughs> All right, so questions, comments, concerns? Yes, Mickey. Um, when do I turn it up? I will give you your cue. You'll okay. Let's Same on this, I take it, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll always say spirit box is up, perfect. and that kind of is also the cue for your motion sensor, which, again, i got to show you more about that. Okay. Let's talk about this place behind me. This is called Big John's Tavern now, which is opened up about two weeks ago. Oh. So it used to be called Big John's. Reopen again, blah, 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 blah. The story we're concerned with is why is it named Big John? It's named after Big John Kennedy. He was a football player for the 1947 New York Giants. This was his bar. He used to sit in the back, right inside that door. And he used to let the bartender know if the cadets coming over from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. Mm. One night, two guys come in, they're not old enough to drink. He has a bartender, throw them out. They come back the next night, they try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John sees what's going on, starts beating the heck out of these guys, just pounding them into the floor. A couple of shots go off. John gets hit in the neck, bullet lands in the wall. John gets up and goes back to the bar after being shot, tells a bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor in an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First off, you know John's the only one who got shot. What's haunting the place? The bullet hole is allegedly still here. They just renovated the place. I haven't had a chance to get in there and you know rub elbows with the new owner but I want to see if the bullet hole is still there. People that sit in the front of this bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous headache. That's from the paranormal activity. The only time I've ever gotten EMF from a device like yours is in the front from time to time. That's a good thing. It means it's not from coming from something man-made. So again, it's very interesting. Uh, the reason why we start here is because I need to know throughout the, the time we spend together if you're gonna have the symptoms that I just told you about, the headaches, the queasiness, the nauseousness. I've had people pass out from too much activity on this tour. So not, not to say anything to scare you, because that's literally the scariest part of our whole night together. But I do need to know so we can move the whole group along immediately. Make sense?
Mm -hmm. totally. All right, let's move on and not talk about our own health, shall we, ladies? <laughs> so, same place. This is Charleston. We had a big earthquake in 1886. Those are our last earthquake, because this is Charleston. We don't get earthquakes. So, the mantle you see in the middle of the building, the white mantle, also wraps around the front on the east bay side. A piece of that broke off from the earthquake, struck somebody in the back of the head, and killed him. They oh, say you can see his ghost in the middle of the night. Notice I said apparently and allegedly a lot with that. It's because I don't have any proof. Mm -hmm. Just a great segue so you guys don't get sick on my tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready, guys, ready to go ghost hunting? Yeah. All yes. right, let's do this. I know, I almost walked into that. <laughs> Alright, I know, I was like, I'm very clumsy. <laughs> I should have got travelers insurance. <laughs> Came for the joke. Came for the ghost, stayed for the jokes. Should I be recording you or just like anybody, around anybody's anybody? skin temperature? Okay. You can't see who anybody is in that picture. It's just a bunch of colorful blobs. I get two point six per second back here. Okay. Well, we're where back there? Like on our street. Ooh. Block, yeah. Probably from the parking lot. Our electrical this lines. This real nice. Are underneath the sidewalks. Okay. Hmm? All right. So welcome to the big red barn lot. This is where we keep your horses for your carriage rides. Your entire time with me should be thought of as kind of a ghost hunting 101. This one's going to be super simple. We're going to be here maybe five to six minutes. The only history here is really simple. This is where we kept horses that delivered milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. Aww. Yeah, so that's how old it is, 1860s to 1920s. So, spirit boxes. Let's make it nice and easy for you. This is not TV. This is not, is somebody here? Because if somebody answers no, somebody's here. They answered you. That's kind of what we're after here. We want the specific details, which is why you guys are all here. So, again, well, by the way, I wanted to point out to you, like, I normally set up for a group of 10, so if I break out, like, some laser lights and kind of thing, like, I might be testing other things myself as we're investigating certain locations, just so you guys know. I do have extra stuff in the back. Cool. Um, but at any rate, we're going to make it nice and simple. If somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is, right? Obviously, you're going to be looking for the, right, looking on your end, and then listening for the color red. Keep in mind, we're using DJs and song lyrics to convey these messages. The color red might not be on that DJ's vocabulary at the time that it spins around. However, things like fire truck, blood, heart, all three of those things are specifically red. What color is the big red barn? Fire truck. That's an acceptable answer to me. I've gotten it before. I've had blood. I've had heart. I've had these things pop up before. That's one clue because it's a specific answer. We're also still close to Big John. Big John's teammates like to come through all the time. How do I know? You heard the number 40 on your spirit box, and you have the word art on your list. Art Faircloth was jersey number 40 on Big John's team. These are the kinds of double clues that I'm going to be looking for through most of the night because most of the stories I tell y'all has multiple people, same name. I need to know who the heck we're talking to. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So let's say you don't get a fire truck, red heart, you know, anything like that. Open it up. What's inside the barn? Now you have horses, animals, draft horses. That's their breed. They were delivery horses. They delivered milk and eggs. That's also protein and calcium. So again, these are all terms I've had in the past multiple times. So we never know what's actually gonna pop up. That's the beautiful thing about this. So spirit boxes, this is where you guys get to start asking some questions. Uh, camera folks, I do want you to stay with me and hey, if you wanna hang out too, just because, um, so the three spirit boxes, I guess because we have two noisemakers, um, see how I want to do this. Let me work with the, the, the millimeter first. Just kind of do a quick sweep around and that way you guys get used to listening to that. I'm going to follow up with each pair. Um, so that's, I'm guessing that's how we're going to be working tonight. We are going to stay within the confines of the lot. Technically the only two people that can see in this lot, Amanda and Jerry, because they have the cameras. Especially Jerry because his has light that we can't see with our naked eye. So he uses the camera. It's kind of like a, a GoPro. Um, but I do want to show you more about that. I want to listen in at the same time. So that way I can kind of give the two of you, you two seem the newest to this, so I want to make sure you guys have the gist of like what we're grasping. All right, so start asking some questions, Miss Tracy. Start getting us, getting used to how that little guy works. If you need to muscle that GoPro camera, Jerry, just, just move it. Whichever hand is more comfortable for you, oh, okay. it will move. Um, and as far as the 
thermal imaging. Again, try to keep somebody in view, but definitely turn that guy's up, make a quick lap in the opposite direction, or if the four of you want to work together, I'll bounce around with you guys here in just a minute. Uh, Perfect. You want me to record? Or Not just, yet. Just, I want you to start recording just, at the no, next stop. I got you. Next stop. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I just want you to get used to it for right now. All right. All right. Ready to be? Mm -hmm. This way. I need to keep you in frame, so I'm just going to follow behind you. What kind of animals used to be housed here? Oh, baby, right in front of your hand. What? It's going blue. What color? What color is this building? Showing blue. We have blue, about 70 degrees, right here. Okay. That's wild. What was this barn used for? No, good answer. No. Oh, it's still showing 70 right here. You want to move this way, baby? Yeah. What kind of animals were housed here? You have to stick it up close to me. Whatever. So I don't record audio. Are you at rest? Oh, I'm getting it again. Oh my god, it's getting 60 degrees. What? Oh, now high 60s. It appears to be right above your box. Right above the box? Yeah. That's crazy because it's not... Are the horses that were housed here happy? What were the carriage horses used for? I mean, we're definitely getting audio. There's, it's, there are some cold spots. We like, had some like 60, 70 degrees. Okay, what's been the average temperature? I'm gonna guess about 84 to 87. About in the 80s, yeah. Okay. But some of it was down in the 60s and then 70s. And it was like right above her box and then below, oh. or like behind kind of. So that's stuff I can definitely look at when I'm watching the video. Did you guys say something when that occurred? So I can find it. Yeah, I said okay. it's right above the box. <laughs> oh, nice. That's yeah. exactly what we want. So. Yeah. Um, it was when she asked the first few questions, though, we got, I don't know, the radio or something picked up. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't make out exactly what it said, but we tried to stay close so that you could pick up the audio. Do you have any other example questions we could ask? I'm trying to keep it, like, simple, but... Right. 
And, and with this stop, like, we're, we're literally going to move on as soon as I'm done talking. Oh, okay. I mean, that way we can dive into deeper history than ponies and football players. Okay. So, I mean, this is Charleston. We have hundreds of years of history, so I'm telling you guys about a guy from 60 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I want you to you know, get into the much deeper history. Um, at the next stop, I will give you questions, but I won't give you the answers, like what colors did they find. Okay. You know okay. I mean? Yeah. So, again, if they're going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay. You can go rogue. Okay. Um, I just need to know what they are, and as long as they're not yes or no questions, okay. or stuff I can prove, that's what I'm after. Gotcha. Okay. So, I, I take that back. That's what you're after here. So, again, I mean, whatever questions you want to ask, I mean, I've been doing this for two years, and people always surprise me with questions they want to know. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but you definitely found some cold spots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> right. She got chills. All right. <laughs> so we can while we're here and i'm giving you the history of this location we can definitely turn the spirit boxes down and you can definitely click that little white button in the back so the light isn't distracting for all of us other way other way there you go perfect <laughs> all right so yours is down so we're good yeah. what do you got going on Oh, we got 60 degrees over here, 70, 60. Exactly servants and slaves were for the Pinckney home. It says the word slaves. Oh, low 60s. Oh, wow. So, welcome to the Pinckney Mansion site, everybody. This is one of my most haunted spots. I love this place. Yeah, we got 50 degrees, 60. They had a couple of cold spots that I definitely need to dive into while we were over at the Big Red Barn, just so you all know. It was actually right above their spirit box device. Mm -hmm. um, so, and... She was pretty close, so hopefully I picked up some of the audio. I couldn't make any of it out, but hopefully we can through the video. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, I guess I should start with, I'm not going to be giving you questions like, what color is George Washington's white horse, like what we did with the big red barn. Okay, it's, this is going to be a much more complicated, this is kind of like the level two. We're gonna, we are going to spend a good 10 to 15 minutes here, and I know it's just a parking lot, so welcome to another beautiful site of Charleston. But this is a place where we get to spread out a little bit, um, and we actually get to explore. I do get a lot of activity out of this location. So, let's get into it. Eliza and Charles Pinkney, man their mansion was in the front. Eliza's garden was lined up with that left tree over there and came all the way across the lot. And as you already know, we're standing where the slave and servant quarters would have been. It actually overlapped this median line right here a little bit, so they did own a little bit further back. So all of these are newer developments. So who the heck were Charles and Eliza Pinkney? So they had a son named Charles, they had a nephew named Charles. That's three Charleses. Remember I told you about the multiple names? The son and the nephew, signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. So it's a pretty big deal for us, And but you guys are all on vacation and nobody wants to talk about politics, including me. So we're going to talk about Eliza. Eliza was way cooler anyway. So Eliza, she married Charles at a young age. I'm not going to give you what that age was. I'm just going to tell you that Charles was over double her age. Big age gap, just so you know. She married him because her father, over in England, thought he was dying. She didn't believe it. She didn't think he was going to be going anytime soon. So she got married. It wasn't for citizenship. wasn't for a green card. There was no such thing. This is the 1740s. I'm boring Jerry already. That's it. <laughs> so, again, 1740s. No such thing yet. She actually married him out of love. She was right. Dad didn't die right away. He starts sending over gifts from England. One of those gifts happened to be indigo. You guys have been here for at least a day. You've seen the word indigo a few times, I'm sure. It's a pretty big deal. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. Anybody here wearing blue jeans? Yes, we got a couple. So that's how we still use it. You have indigo in your pants right now. So yeah, I know. I, I know it sounds like a weird saying to say, but, but it's exactly what it is. 
No, and we have coveralls. Like, seriously? How did I miss the coveralls? <laughs> the overalls. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> Overall, a great look. <laughs> Lots of indigo. So, she had to learn from her slaves how to keep it cultivated in our weird temperatures. It does get cold here in January, February, March. So once she figured out how to keep it going, she moved it up to a, their other plantation in Mount Pleasant, just north of here. She calls dad, not literally, because it's the 1750s. She says, hey dad, I need some places to be able to sell this. We were missing out on a lot because rice plantations in Charleston were going downhill. She swoops in with her indigo plants. Boom, we have a businesswoman in the middle of colonial times. Something absolutely unheard of during that time. So, I know, right? Mm -hmm. So you should see me during Women's History Month. Like, I'm, I'm a cheerleader, I swear. <laughs> Most of my stories are about women. Um, but anyway, so a couple of weird facts because that's, I mean, I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg of what she's done, but the weird stuff. Obviously, you can ask about how old she was when she got married, and then obviously how old Charles was. You can ask what happened to the mansion. It's obviously not here anymore. Then you can ask what that tragedy was. Obviously, it was a tragedy of some sort. That's the only clue I'm going to give you. Eliza, the one I'm speaking of, was the second wife named Eliza from Charles. Yeah. They both went by their maiden names. I think we're all adults here. I don't have to explain what a maiden name is. It's good. <laughs> they both started with the letter L. Again, the only clue I'm going to give you. So it's an L name of some sort. Uh, as far as her children go, tread lightly. There is a tragedy among those children. Ask anything it's, as far as like maybe how many kids, what were their names, what were they famous for. Leave it alone. If you start poking the bear on that tragedy, all activity will stop. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times, and I go home scratching my head going, why didn't we have much at the Pinckney Mansion site? I get a phone call. Nick, I'm so sorry. I asked about the tragedy of her child. Okay, I get it. But it stops for the rest of the night. There's literally nothing. I'm like pulling strings trying to make stuff happen. Um, as far as her death, she's pretty open. You want to ask anything about her death? Eliza, how old were you when you died? What did you die from? Where are you buried? What U.S. president was a pallbearer at your funeral? Again, that's, I know, an interesting question, and you cannot mistake that answer when it pops up. Again, you are looking for those details. If you want to go rogue, I cannot prove anything about the slaves that were living back here. I just can't do it. There's no record. There's a few first names in some of her letter books, but that's about it. There's not much there. So, look for things I can prove. Not Eliza, were you happy in your marriage? First off, that's a yes or no question, and I can't prove if she was happy or not. <laughs> we want dates, we want numbers, birthdays, whatever things that she was famous for. Take that for granted. Maybe dive deep into what she liked to do. Those are things that I can actually look up and see what I can find out if I don't already know it. Again, I'm not the glossary of Pinkney family. However, I do know quite a bit, and I know a lot about the children because they like to pop up a lot. So The actual children do? The children love to come through. Yeah, it's very interesting. And the clues are dominant. Like, I know exactly as soon as I hear certain phrases. So again, whatever you hear on those two noisy spirit boxes, there's things about the kids you might not know about, that you don't know about. Tell me what you hear, kind of keep tally. You will see me bouncing around from group to group, seeing where we're at, excuse me, where we're at with things. And then cluing you all in on what else is happening. So if you heard something and then you have a word, I'm gonna let everybody know what's going on so that way we can just keep continuing. Again, we're gonna spend about 10 to 15 minutes here. You are gonna shoot some video. Did it shut off? I wonder if that battery drained. Looks like it may have. I don't see the screen on that. I'll have to swap that battery out. Yeah, it's definitely not on. I haven't turned it off. So. It normally doesn't turn off due to activity. Yeah, okay, the battery's done. That's weird. Can you see how it's kind of giving me all these weird lines? Everybody else, let's spread out. Keep in mind, Amanda, people do not like their cars being filmed. If somebody's going to their car, oh, to their brake, again, good to know. yeah. I don't like to run with six other people. I'm left behind. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everybody else, let's spread out. Turn your REM pod back up. Let's see what we can find. Definitely get those spirit boxes yep. going. You're not going to disturb anybody here. Let's go over here, baby. I can keep you in the frame. <laughs> Eliza, how old were you when you died? Oh. 
Eliza, how many children did you have? If there are any children here, what are your names or name? What were your children's favorite activities? I thought it was about the, like the kids. How old were you when you and Charles got married? Who was the pallbearer at your funeral? Which U.S. president? Eliza, what was your maiden name? Eliza, what was your middle name? What year were you born? Eliza, where were you born? What was your father's name? Eliza, how many kids do you have? Eliza, did any of the servants have children here? Eliza, how old was your husband when he died? Not a whole, I mean, not a lot, but whenever we answer, ask questions, this, we hear some kind of music. Yeah. Or some kind of little bit of lyrics. There's been a couple freaky noises too, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll all hear them. 
on video. Eliza, is there anything you want us to know? Is this annoying to have people asking you the same <laughs> questions? She said, nah. Want to go to here? Yeah. Eliza, what happened to the mansion? Why isn't the mansion here anymore? What happened to the mansion? What were your children's names? Eliza, how did your husband die? How did you die? How did you die? Where were you buried? How much money was your indigo business worth? Did you have any business partners? When was your mansion built? Ooh, I'm getting the 60s again. What happened to your mansion? Eliza, can you please tell us what happened to your mansion?
What was your father's name? Where did you live before you got married? Eliza, what color was your mansion once it was built here? How many rooms did your mansion have? You heard Europe? Oh. Yeah. I, I, when I asked where she lived before she got married, it sounded like Europe? Oh, kind of, yeah. I like Europe. That's good. Um, you can ask where she was born because it was not Europe. Okay. okay. I did ask that. I think you did. I don't recall. It didn't really... It's, a lot of it has been kind of indiscernible. Okay. And this is a, a waiting and patience game. That's yeah, why we spend yeah. like 10 to 15 minutes with some of these hot spots. Yeah. Just because, again, it, this is normally I would sit here for hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, asking the same question like every five minutes for 30 minutes. We, yeah. See if I can get an we were getting um, more of the like 60-ish degrees, 60 to 70 degrees around this mm. briefly. Yeah. And it's no. weird because it's an electronic item using energy. Yeah. So again, it should be getting warm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then as soon as I brought attention to it, it went back to you know, 70s, 80s. Yeah. So there's definitely something here, and then whenever we're talking, like. Yeah, as soon as we call attention to it, it. But you can see on here. Um, Tracy's been trying to find out how many kids she had. Okay. So maybe you can help her out. Okay. Okay. Eliza, how many children did you have? Eliza, can you tell us how many children you had? Family practice. Or family. Said family practice. Did that just say George Washington? I've got chills. Is it cold by me, baby? It was. It was in the 60s. Eliza, can you please tell us how many children you had? How many children did you have? Eliza, what were your children's names? How many children did you have? Can you tell us? Did that just say two? Can you tell us what happened to your mansion? What happened to your mansion?
How did you die, Eliza? Stop. Eliza, can you tell us what happened to your mansion? And can you tell us how you died? Eliza, how did you die? What happened to your mansion? Eliza, what happened to your mansion? names. So, we definitely heard George Washington at one point. No, you did not. I swear yes. to God. We just straight up said George Washington. Yeah, and we hadn't even asked anything. It just said yeah. George Washington. We also no, heard yeah. the number two. Okay. That we heard four also. We, we heard four also. That was a little bit later, but I feel like the two is definitely more clear. But... Was wrong. But George Washington was 100%. Oh, 100%. Was that the fall bearer? That was weird. Because everything else has been really, like, kind of fragmented. But yeah. that was, like... Weird pit bull at one point. But we assumed <laughs> that had nothing to do with the situation. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Because I've heard drop it like it's hot when people ask me what happened to the mansion. Uh, <sighs> all right. I'm, I want to end on a great note. Let's okay. Go. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you two. We got good stuff. What do you got now? Well, He's that George Washington, clear as day, and like when we asked who was the pallbearer at her wedding, yeah. which U.S. president, and I mean, yeah, so or yeah, and whatever we said, like, and we were, yeah. <laughs> she asked the question, <laughs> yeah, and, when, and that happened when we were standing over there, and she got some cold spots, and I got the chills. Nice. I mean, it was in the out. 50s and 60s, yeah, for, yeah, wow, yeah. yeah. You could stop your video there. You could stop yours too. And then I consider. Bolts are basically turnbuckles. In the event we have another earthquake since 1886, which we haven't, you can turn those turnbuckles and it will straighten the building back up again. Oh, wow. Great right theory? Doesn't work. Don't get excited, Chris. <laughs> so, those, the reason why those earthquake bolts are still there is because they're the very first set that we ever put in in Charleston. Why? Because this is the oldest government building on the East Coast, finished in 1713. I told you guys about the Charlestown Wall earlier. Mm -hmm. This is the road where the Charlestown Wall came. This is Cumberland. It went up past the powder magazine and then started going south towards the battery. It's in the corner on purpose. If it gets attacked from the water three blocks away, the cannonball's gonna have a hard time getting through 32 inch thick walls. Let's say it does, right? Goes all the way through, blows up the gunpowder. There's sand in the roof still from 1712 that's supposed to go up in the air and then fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder. 
another great theory that does not work. So we had another powder magazine, or yeah, just like this one down by the battery. Sorry, powder and battery always flip flop in my head for some reason. But anyway, we had one down by the battery. It actually got attacked because it's much closer to the water. Sand went up and fell, but the building burned to the ground. So again, that's how we know. This one's just never been attacked. However, it did serve in seven different wars with the Civil War being its last servant. So again, lots of activity going on around this building. The reason why we're here to talk about pirates is because our story begins right in the middle of its construction. It's familiar. This is a different type of haunting than somebody's home at the Pinckney Mansion site. This took a whole decade to build. It's a government building, of course it did. 1703 to 1713. So our story begins in 1708. Follow me, there's a lot of twists. Young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She moves here with her dad and his mistress. Mistress is her mom. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. The three of them are getting away from his wife. <laughs> How pissed was she that they ran across the world in Ireland, from Ireland in 1708 by boat? So just saying, scorned lady. Pretty bad. So they land here in Charleston. Dad buys a plantation in Georgetown. It's about an hour and a half from here on a drive. Mom dies pretty quickly. After they get here, he starts sending his young teenage daughter down to Charleston to sell their crops and their wares. This building is familiar. We're going to fast forward. The building is done. 1713. Fast forward again. 1715. Pirates are coming through town. This is exciting times. It's the golden age. So she falls in love pretty quickly. Of course she does. Let's stop there. Her mentality. There was a rumor that she actually killed one of her servants when she was back home in Ireland with a knife to the belly. When she was a child, folks. Like, this is pretty, pretty hardcore. So like, when pirates are coming through town, she's stoked. Right? You guys seem like excited about the George Washington. Yeah. Thing. That's yeah. this girl, right? So she's all over it. She falls in love. His name's James Bonney. Dad doesn't prove because he's a filthy pirate. I'm not going to approve of that either. They run away to Jamaica. They get married. Anne Cormack becomes Anne Bonney, your most famous female mm. pirate of the Golden Age. Now, when they get there, Mr. Bonney, her new husband, is not who she thought he was. He's basically a privateer for the British. He's a spy. He's a coward. This is not who she wanted at all. Captain Jack Sparrow, he is not. <laughs> she falls in love again. This guy's name is John Rackham. We're in guy number two. I'll keep tally for you. John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. Much cooler name. Mm -hmm. Has his own ship. Much younger guy. Not a privateer. They call him Calico Jack because he wears the jackets of the men he kills. So oh. again, that's kind of his mentality. That's his M.O. She's a female. Females curse pirate ships. She cannot be part of the ship. He cuts her a deal. You can be part of the crew if you dress like the crew. Meaning you have to hide your gender. Mm. She's okay with this cross-dressing because Dad, back in Ireland, used to dress her as a boy to hide her away from his wife. Oh. You guys with me on that one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So she's like, all right, let's do this. I want to be a pirate. You guys see the large groups coming through the other way? Mm -hmm. That's what we're allowed to go up to. I Jeez. Yeah. So anyway, back to the story. She's part of the crew. She's allowed to be a female in his quarters. Of course, he's the captain. She eventually gets pregnant, but you cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. <laughs> he drops her off in Cuba to keep everything going. Have the baby there. These are friends of mine. Come back. We'll figure it out later. She comes back. There's no baby. We have no idea what happened to that child. She's also dressed like a female. She doesn't give a damn anymore about hiding her gender. This makes Jack mad. Y'all know her mentality. She's going to make him even more mad because that's who she is. So. Mm -hmm. He just captured another pirate ship. She's going to go down below deck, and she's going to go flirt with these guys and make Jack even more mad. Mm. The guy she's flirting with, this is an interesting one, reveals his gender to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack just captured. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we have two females doing the exact same thing. Her name is Mary Reed. She convinces Mary to become part of the crew. Now, they're crazy. Who's going to do this? This is unheard of. The British find out where they are. They send the entire fleet to come after and get this ship. The other men are down below deck with the captives, too drunk to come up. It's Anne and Mary only of trying to fight the entire British fleet. Obviously, the ship's going to get taken. As It does get taken. As Calico Jack is getting arrested, Anne's last words were to him, you should have fought like a man instead of going down like a dog. So the word dog shows up here quite a bit too. Now, the judge. His name is Nicholas Laws. So when you guys hear or see my name, it's not me. It's the judge. He wants to see the two men by themselves. He tries and hangs Calico Jack and all his men. They're gone. Dead. A week later, Anne and Mary go in front of the judge. They reveal their gender. He doesn't care. You're still pirates. You're still going to hang. We plead our bellies. 
was the last thing that they said to him, trying to save themselves, meaning they're both claiming to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about that either. We're going to delay your hanging, send them both back to jail. Dad is still here in Charleston with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne, brings her back home. She remarries. Guy number four, yes, we're counting Mary Reed, has four children, dies at the age of 84. That's all we know. I know, crazy facts. Mary Reed dies a year later from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. We have no idea if either pregnancy was true. We have no idea what's going on with the rest of Mary or uh, Anne Bonnie's story once she reached Charleston. There's many versions. Everything I just told you was re from reading many books and only giving you the common facts. This story is full of holes. Ask what you want to on your spirit boxes. I only gave you two things that I can prove that I know for sure. The name of Calico Jack Ship, the name of Anne Bonnie's parents. Everything else is fair game. If you get a reading on your, where's it at? On your particular device, this is normally a dead zone. I'm gonna be quite honest. If you get something, that means something else is probably going off. Okay. Spirit boxes, we can definitely get a little loud and proud in here. Keep in mind these are apartments. Mm -hmm. If you wanna to go to the front of the building to get footage, either on thermal imaging or your full spectrum, you can do so, just stay out of the way of other tours. Um, have you gotten any words since I've been telling all this crazy hoopla? Um, particular secretary, average. No, mm -hmm. not, definitely not average. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have some fun with this. Um, we will spend 10 minutes here, just like we did at the Pinkney Mansion site. We actually got more, so we we'll probably spend a little bit more time there. I, I really wasn't paying attention. I was so stoked about the things that you guys have got. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's spread out. How's your battery doing on your full spectrum? Yeah, about seven minutes left. Oh, perfect. Well, let's waste it. Let's burn it up. <laughs> um, I would actually go to the front of the building and see what you can capture up there. Put your, you know, camera right inside the gate. Um, so I actually like to hang out back here by the wall because that's where we'll end things. So once mm -hmm. we actually kind of collectively see what's going on, if things are a really high thing or a really low thing, we'll kind of see where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. Under bed just popped up. Under bed? That's weird. Yeah. I don't think she was under the bed. I don't think she was. <laughs> she was <laughs> under the bed. How yeah. many yeah. different people? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm more like the numbers are normally dead. Jack, if you were a type of cat, what kind would you be? <laughs> what was the name of Calico Jack's ship? Calico Jack, what was the name of your ship? What? Where? On me? On me? Calico Jack, what was the name of your ship? Forties. Calico Jack, what was the name of your ship? Jack, what was the name of your ship? Jack, what was the name of your ship? There was Mary Reed and Annie Bonnie. Good, I think there's definitely some like 50s on there. I got high 50s and low 60s for 30, 40 seconds. But again, we're at a different part of the city. So is that the average, maybe? That's, I'm seeing everything in 70s, 80s, 90s. So I'm getting low 60s again. Yeah, I'll definitely but I got. Pretty video a little bit more thoroughly than I do most. Yeah. We believe. We believe. 
And that's the great thing, like when I match these two devices up, is yeah. you can get that full red spirit box recording. Yeah. Great. But then when you have it this way and you can see that and hear the responses, and I have capability to like add that to the video. It yeah. just gets too complicated if you don't like because there's too many layers. Yeah. yeah. I can go through it no problem, but you guys don't do this every day. Right, yeah. right. Do you know what I mean? So even going through that by itself can be difficult. So yeah. Yeah. it's just a matter of you know, I guess level expertise. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I guess some people that are just, they want to see what methods I have, like they have their own equipment, they bring their own equipment. Oh, oh it happens cool. all the time. Yeah. So, oh. I, mean, I, I see all kinds of people. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I get like anywhere from five spectrum. year olds to 100 people, like, you know, 100 yeah. year old people like oh, that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That are like trying to contact the lost and clubs and things like that. I'm like, oh. and it happens. They just, I ask that you don't tell me what the agenda is. Yeah. yeah. So that way if something does pop up, I'm not biased to be like, oh, yes, I heard Tommy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the George Washington bit that we did back there. I don't mm. want to know. Yeah. If, you, if you're trying to reach somebody, you know, that's fine. That's up to you. If something wants to come through, we'll let it come through. Yeah. Just, they're not coming home with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. It's, it's yeah. happened. It's definitely you brought happened. stuff home with you? Sure. Ooh. That's why there's all stuff, like, tagged all over my back. Yeah. yeah. And I got psychic friends. Like, that's the, the company I keep. Yeah. Like, they send me stuff all the time. Yeah. Help oh, keep everything good. level and grounded. So it keeps Protect you guys protected yourself. and keeps me protected. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's it great. likes to mess with my, my seizures and stuff. So. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. But it's Ooh. crazy. Yeah. And I do more than electronic stuff, too. Yeah. So I, I, I have spirit boards and pendulum boards and all that. Oh, spirit cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And we just, I, you know, I just move. So we got to do research on the area. Because obviously it's South Carolina. I don't know where you guys are from. I didn't have a chance to look up your address. Yeah. yeah. Your um, area code. That's how I normally keep track of everybody. Um, but no wait. Said no wait. Mm-hmm. The first thing I've heard since I've been over here besides we believe. Yeah. But I kind of overlaid a map already. My website really. We need to do it. I'm like, I gotta know what's there. Oh yeah. If I'm, you know, gonna be stirring anything up. Yeah. Construction. You know, like, mm-hmm. so, yeah. So, oh, absolutely. So she's like, just tell me what's there. I'm like, well, we gotta experiment once we move in. Yeah. Right. So I'll give you the history of what's been there because it was part of a plantation. Oh, you know, oh kind of absolutely, so, yeah. I mean, new build, but yeah, if it's on old land. Yeah. Which all of, all of this is old land. All of this is, yeah. So, yeah. That's crazy. Sure. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm stoked for this weekend to do this lighthouse. I normally don't like to go to the popular places. Like, I like to go to stuff where we started. Yeah. But when this came up, it was kind of a, all right, I gotta take this opportunity. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, this is awesome. You die again? Yeah. What are you doing to me, man? What's the number five minutes left? I can't help it if it's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the light on the top? Calico Jack. What is the name of your ship? <laughs> Calico Jack, what is the name of your ship? What is the name of your ship? What is the name of your ship? It's it's trying. Is it? (laughs) Um, let's see. What is the name of your ship, Chalco? Calico Jack, what is the name of your ship? Blue or yellow? What's your ship, blue or yellow? Positive. Yeah. Are you still recording? I heard higher earlier too. I don't know if that means anything. Calico Jack, what is the name of your ship? Calico Jack, what is the name of your ship? Calico Jack, where did you die? Jamaica, Puerto Rico. Rico. (laughs) Another place. Body. Body. Calico Jack, where did you die? Oh no! Oh my God. <laughs> we just asked Calico Jack where he died, and it said on an island. 
I just got chills. Oh, that was really good. Cool. Uh, <laughs> it is an island. Yeah. <laughs> On an island. <laughs> okay. Thank you. On an island. I want to say something. Something wrong. I can't remember exact pinpoint. Um, but he was hanged, obviously, with his crew. Yeah. Well, that so. was creepy. That was like that was weird. very clear. We recorded it. Good. Yeah. Have we heard anything on your end? Diamond. 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 We get a common commercial here that says Diamonds Direct. Did it sound anything like that? Yeah. Okay. Calico. Calico Jack, can you tell us where you died? Calico Jack, where did you die? Calico Jack, where did you die? I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We heard higher and blue and yellow, but I don't know what that means. Yeah. I just heard victim. <laughs> yeah. And she did say, don't go down like a dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, from here, do you have any other words, Tracy, that came up? Uh, just head. Hmm. A. A? <laughs> like as in Anne Bonnie? Oh, could be. So, we'll see if anything else pops up on the recording, the Spirit Box recording. Um, so from here, I'm going to start collecting devices. Where did you guys all park? Where do I need to direct you guys? Oh, we're at the park. Park. Right right next to where you started. Started. Oh, so you're actually going up this way. Yeah. yeah. We're up on King Street. We're Ubering so back. Yeah, so we're going to wander around. Yeah. We're going that way. All right. So you guys will have.